Sugar maple, or Acer saccharum, is one of the largest and most important hardwoods in the forest and in the landscape. They've been tapped for maple syrup production since the first European settlers saw the Native Americans do it back in the 1600s. And to this day, it remains to be a vital industry and a fun hobby, especially for those in the Northeast. Long valued as a timber species for the wood's hardness and its beauty, the lumber has been used for everything from general construction, hardwood floors, cabinet making, even baseball bats. It's also a popular ornamental tree because of its natural spreading form and its stunning fall foliage. Tolerant of shade, the sugar maple can also do well in full sun, and it can survive a variety of soil types and conditions, but it's most happy in deep, moist, and well-drained soils with fine to medium textures. The sugar maple can also be prone to girdling roots when it's planted too deep or mulched too high, so remember to always keep that root flare exposed. Now I'm heading up this mountainside to meet up with a certified arborist and sugar maple expert, Jeremy Gardner. Now let's see what he could tell us about this remarkable species, both here in its native habitat and also in the landscape. So Jeremy, what can you tell me about where we are and about the sugar maple species? We are on the side of a mountain in the middle of a sugar bush. What's a sugar bush? A sugar bush is essentially a monoculture filled with sugar maple that are tapped for their sugars and their starches uh, to make maple syrup. Monoculture meaning it's the it means predominant? It predominantly one species. So in this case, the monoculture is sugar maple. And is that deliberate? Is that by design? That is by design. These trees seem so healthy and robust here. So what about this area where we are in this soil makes them so vigorous? One of the keys to sugar maple success in a landscape is monitoring and being able to manipulate soil temperature, but most importantly, soil temperature fluctuations. Hmm. So in a, in a wooded setting, because of this wonderful stuff right here, this is the duff leaf litter layer. In a wooded setting, this helps keep the soil temperature from fluctuating too much. Even during a 95 degree day, these trees may wake, wake up in the morning with 60, 62 degree soil temperature. And because of this duff leaf litter layer, the temperature may only rise to 66, 67 degrees. So in a sense, it insulates. It insulates it like mulch. This duff leaf litter layer provides the mycorrhizae, the microorganisms, um, helps optimize pore space um, for oxygen to get to the root system, which is essential for uptake. Mm -hmm. When a leaf falls to the ground, the pH of that leaf is about four and a half to five. So the leaves coming off the tree every year um, help keep the soil acidic by design and optimal for the plant, in this case, sugar maple. Uh, so this leaf litter layer is the key to these trees' success. And at, at Bartlett Tree Experts, we have a way of optimizing the health of a sugar maple. And the way to do that is you make that tree think it's growing in the woods. Here we have a mature sugar maple in a landscape environment. And this plant was struggling a number of years ago. What we did was to mimic the wooded environment, we removed all the sod around the tree, about seven to eight feet in radius. We aerated the soil structure with an air spade. It went down eight, nine inches. We incorporated organic material, adjusted the soil pH according to the soil sample that we took before we even started this process. And we incorporated biochar, which is this little black charcoal stuff. And what this does is this enables the microorganisms to maintain a sustainable population to enrich the tree. They hide out in the biochar and use it as a house so predators can't destroy them. So the microorganisms continue to break down the organic material just like it would in a wooded environment in the middle of the forest. Hmm. So that's what we've done. We've brought the forest to the landscape. Wow. You know, something I'm noticing is I don't see a lot of structural defects in this forest stand. And the reason why you don't see a lot of structural defects like poor branching unions is because of the canopy ratios on these trees. Mm -hmm. This is a forest setting with a tight basal area. Mm -hmm. So because the canopy is so tight, which helps with soil temperature tremendously, um, the trees never develop uh, large canopies. So they tend not, they tend to develop single bowl um, genetics where there's one single dominant main stem from the root crown uh, all the way to the top of the tree. 
But let's say you have a sugar maple in your front yard all by itself, not in a forest setting. Are there, is it prone to any structural defects? It is simply because of phototropism. If there's available light, the plant will grow into it. So that, that makes a tree uh, put on more lateral branch weight. So okay. that's something that we need to pay attention to when we're in the landscape is excessive lateral branch weight and supplementing support for that branch weight. Because when they don't have any competition, they'll fill the space. You can just about eradicate structural problems with tree pruning early on. So two to three years after the tree is planted and then every three to five years after that, you can manipulate how the plant will grow. Are there any pest problems that are commonly associated with the sugar maple in this forest setting? When, when you have a healthy plant, that plant has the ability to fight off pests much more than a stressed plant. The system in place out here in nature is ideal and efficient. More so in a landscape scenario, there are pests that can be managed. You know, they don't get lacanium scale every year. They don't get aphids every year. They don't get maple leaf cutter every year. You just sort of have to observe the plant, treat the symptoms depending upon what they get. This is a dominant species. These trees don't even reach maturity until they're 90 to 120 years of age. Wow. So this is a multi-generational tree, a noble tree as it's been coined.